English counties are like English seasons, arbitrary yet undeniable. They bleed into each other, as Al Stewart once intoned in his light Lancastrian vowels like a watercolour in the rain. They're visible from certain vantage points within one another, yet at other times they blot each other out entirely. They echo and merge, and their boundaries change. Travelling between Morton in the Marsh and Chipping Camden, you might glimpse a roadside incident, a sudden flash, a negative sunspot on your retina. like the man in the yellow mac in Twin Faces of Evil. If you stamp on a frozen puddle on a thrillingly cold afternoon in January, or trail your fingers in a sun-dappled stream in July round here, the water will crackle with glistenings of Oxfordshire and Warwickshire flowing between castle and college, battlement and spire, in an armorial continuum of grey and gold.
The Rollrite Stones are one of the flashpoints on my map. They're the fisheye lens through which, at certain moments, I can step into my own past and watch it drip into everyone else's. They're the bulbous and kaleidoscopic eye of psychedelia, the brass bordered mirror absorbing the faceless visitors to the antique shop in my dreams. The lens is fringed with red, like the credits of Brian Clements' thriller. If I place my ear next to any of the stones here, I can hear all of the blurred voices and clickings of the clock of all the afternoons in between, rattling down the ghost of a track, faded and redundant, like Rollwright Holt. The stones are aliens, dependent on globulin. They need blood to survive. It's the door of the changing room that opens directly onto an afternoon in 1973. The Rollwright stones are Neolithic megalithic, enmeshed in ritual and folklore, and luminous with believable magic. The King's Men. They're the King's Men huddled and gazing toward their hesitant monarch, turned to stone by Mother Shipton. She confronted him and said, If Long Compton thou canst see, King of England thou shalt be. This proved impossible, and the king and his men were petrified after the witch spake thus. As Long Compton thou canst not see, King of England thou shalt not be. Rise up stick and stand still stone, for King of England thou shalt be not. Thou and thy men shall horse stones be, and I shall be an elder tree. As it was her that precipitated the situation in the first place, you have to ask yourself, what was in it for her? Not much by the look of it. If I'd have been that king, I'd have done what English ultra-eccentric Mad Jack Fuller purportedly did when he lost a drunken bet in a London club about whether or not a certain church spire was visible from his place. He went home and had a fake spire built so that it appeared that he had been right all along. Now that's what I call dedication to the untruth. There are, of course, things in this universe which cause me consternation. The triple blow of the realisation that time travel, unassisted flight and invisibility were all impossible. And of course, 
when they axed the TV versions of Logan's Run and Planet of the Apes. But there are compensations. They lie by the side of the road, in the midst of an England, where the Cotswolds go haywire, and someone turns the gold of the stone, hewn by black country sweat, up to eleven. They are heraldic, yet unheralded, pastoral, yet pregnant with residual atmosphere, and they are free of charge. You might not think that makes up for much, but you'd be wrong.